let it just um, be planted in our hearts and let it bear forth amazing fruit in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Honor to stand here and share the word of God. This is the best thing that God has done for humanity. I am enjoying, enjoying it. it. There, there is, is no, no day, day goes by that I don't uh, give thanks to the King of King and Lord of Lords that His name is Jesus Christ. I thank you, Yah. Clap for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Amen, and this is a great opportunity. This is a true house of the Lord, and we've been enjoying it. We've been here uh, off and on for the last 15, 20 years, so uh, this is the second time we are here. This is a home, and uh, we really appreciate uh, the leadership, pastor, elders, and the congregation. We really appreciate, especially this time that the world is in the very terrible time and there is no hope for tomorrow. There is always one trouble after trouble. But Jesus said, do not dis be dismayed. Amen. And he has overcome the world. Right. Amen. And now we are enjoying that. That was accomplished by Jesus Christ. Today I'm going to spend some time in the Bible, if it is okay. You know, I don't go anywhere since I, I, I found, who's the author? I never leave this down. I was getting prepared for my um, uh, PhD qualifi uh, qualification exam, and it was during the time just I came to Christ. And this book was given to me. And I took off two weeks to get prepared for my, my exam at university. But uh, this book, I would start in the morning and I read a uh, chapter and uh, get in the middle of a very, very touching story. And uh, I couldn't put it down. I said, well, let me read through uh, until lunch. And after lunch, I get ready for exam. So I did after lunch. Well, let me finish that, that, the rest of that the story. And on and on. So I... One full week went by, but uh, I'm glad I have this in my hands. I don't go anywhere without it. I mentioned this in earlier ser service. I am working on my technology advancements. I'm trying to get to use electronic uh, devices for this, but still, for some reason, this is connected to me. And it may, I, <laughs> this may be the book, and, and, the, and the ink and paper will be with me the rest of my life. I was traveling, uh, and I was coming home. I was in the airport in uh, John F.K., and um, it was a very busy time of the uh, day, and uh, at the security, you send your baggages. So I sent my baggages going through, and uh, everybody was so anxious. They were a bunch of lines, and in the line, anytime you say, probably you have experience. When the line stops, things are not that means something. They detected something. So it happened to be the line that I was waiting for, and now they waited, they waited. Normally they see something, they clear it fast, but this one did not get cleared. They look at, they look at, the guy called another guy, the manager came, and they called someone else, and he said, now the whole uh, the group of uh, people are looking at what they seen. And pretty soon the belt was released, and here the uh, bag come out, and that happened to be my briefcase. So who is this belong to us? Nobody raised hand, and so it's, it's me. So they took me to the corner, and they very slowly, they opened, they said, do you have something in the bag? I said, well, I my belongings. Is there anything that we need to worry about? I said, I don't know. I said, well, we see something very strange. So we go slowly, go in there, and then take the uh, bag. They take everything out, and they send the bag through, and... They don't see anything. Then they get my belongings, everything I have, put it in the bin. They send it to them and say, wow. So they look at it and they come out and they, the big guy, the, the manager, uh, happened to be the expert. Said, oh, I found it. I know what it is. Happened to be a brand new Bible just I purchased and has golden edges here. The way he got it, because when I had it in my briefcase, it, sh uh, it showed that there was something sharp this way. And then when it was sent through, they showed that, changed the position. So this guy comes here and he 
showed them everybody will look, look at. Everybody seemed that they lost what their plan was. They didn't care about being later. I would, I'm not exaggerating. People, they tried to put their belt and they want to see what this guy had. And uh, they put the uh, pants or, or the shoes. <laughs> and, and this guy tell me, oh, you know what it is? Because the light, and he had it in my ball in his hand. He said, the light doesn't go through this. I say, you are sir, because you are right, because the light comes out of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and this guy happened to be a devout Christian. He loses it. Looks like I turned the light on and he was zapped with thousand volts of power. And he goes up and I say, yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Light comes out of it. Hey, hey. <laughs> And I look around, everybody looking, the whole TSA agent were looking at, all the people were looking at. And, and he told me, sir, uh, have a good day. I said, my friend already has been a good day. <laughs> all glory to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, uh, um, Thank you, Pastor Darren. Probably he's watching me somewhere. He's trying to get his load, uh, gun loaded for the pig, but at the same time, probably he's watching me. We love you. I already miss him. Some people came and say, hey, we really miss Pastor Darren. I didn't know what did they mean. <laughs> I'm going to spend some time uh, in chapter 4 of Gospel of John. Sometimes in chapter 3, we will look at... Uh, Mark chapter 7, chapter 17, and here and there. And as I mentioned, in the Bible we read that the people of Berea, they were noble people and they were wise. They would listen and they go home and search the scriptures to make sure what was heard, what was taught, was according to the word of God. I pray that not only I be touched, but also you be touched, and I pray that God kindle a desire that is exactly in the heart of our Father, heart of Jesus, and the will of our Father, that now we catch the glimpse of his desire for the world, because he gave his only begotten Son to win the soul, and we be involved, we be after the souls, after the cities, after the nations. Amen, Azizam. Amen. Uh, the visit of Samaritan woman, it is so fascinating to me that uh, we see a woman visit uh, the Jesus Christ probably less than, I'm just um, guessing, less than half an hour. And uh, she gets so touched and so uh, her, heart, her heart gets changed and then she launches into very effective ministry that in less than half a day she capture the heart of the whole city and bring the whole city to Jesus and they all receive the salvation through the heart that was changed, changed for Jesus Christ and became instrument in the hand of Holy Spirit and see what happened. The whole nation came to know Jesus and to knowledge of love. Amen. Hallelujah. It is so interesting to me when I read this and uh, this um, on and on. I love to spend time. Uh, there are many points that we can get out of it, but one of the, a couple of things I will touch on today. But the thing is very interesting to me that this woman, uh, which one? Oh, sorry, okay. I thought God was speaking to me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Um, so I see this woman that uh, get hold of the uh, plan of God for her life, and then she runs to the group of people that she was hated by. And she tried to avoid, she did everything possible to avoid not to face these people. And I have grown up in the place that going to the well, bring them the water, well were very important. Hopefully, I get a, a chance to give a sermon on the well itself. And uh, uh, when you go to get water, that either you go in the morning or you go late afternoon. 
And most of the time in the afternoon, that becomes a time of uh, socializing, uh, gathering time, especially the young ladies, that becomes like you find a reason to go to mall or spend time with your friend. So they go with the container to drink water, so all the way they are socializing, and that's a time of to fellowshipping. And either you go early in the morning to bring the water you need for that day, or you go bring the water that you need through the night and even for next day. But this woman, this uh, chooses the time that not nobody around, and it's a very strange time, and comes and we see that uh, Jesus is sitting at the well. We, right before that, it says that Jesus had need to go to Samaria. And he goes there and sees the 12 disciples that have gone to buy food for, the, for him, for themselves and him. And now see this woman comes and now recognizes that this, this, is, this man is not from Samaria, is a Jewish man. And now as soon as she gets there, uh, Jesus asks, give me a drink. It is very odd for a woman of Samaria even talk to a man, and this man happened to be the Jewish, and he did not want to talk to these people because supposedly in the eyes of Jewish people, Samaritans were um, not clean. And now on top of that, a man is asking for the drink. So you ask him for the drink, and Jesus said, if you knew who is asking you, and if you knew the gift of God. You would ask me that I'm asking them for water and I will give you the water that will, the, the living water. And the woman said, even you don't have, the, the, the well is so deep, you don't have anything to draw water. How can you give me that water? Jesus says, the water that you drink from this well, you're going to thirst again, but the water I give you is going to create a well, a spring of living water that gushes from your body and it goes for the ever, eternity, ever and ever I will never stop. So well, that's what I need. I, then I don't have to come here. I don't have to worry about seeing these people. I don't have to deal with this hot, hot day at, and come at this time. Very lonely. Just give me to drink this water. And then when Jesus prevailed, who is this, this woman get revelation and call Jesus sir? Very soon, when Jesus said about everything about her life, so oh, I see that you are prophet, and very soon that when Jesus introduced himself as a Messiah, and then she grabbed the truth of God and his love through Jesus Christ, and all of a sudden leave the water pot and run to the city and bring the whole city. My prayer is that. Something happened to our hearts. We get so changed that the Holy Spirit uses us. Not to be copying the ministry that that woman had, but something that even more. We go after the cities, go after the nations, and bring them all to Jesus who died and he gave his life for. Amen. So we read that... uh, in conversation, Jesus tells this woman, if you knew the gift of God and who, is, who asked you to give me a water or a drink, if we jump to verse 23, it says, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Worshiping in spirit and truth is, is, is from the heart that has been changed. The heart that has experienced the love of God. The, the, the heart that is familiar with Jesus. The heart that knows who Jesus is. When you have that revelation and when you have knowledge, when you get to the, to the worship, you worship in the spirit and truth. Because the, 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 the heart that is changed, the, 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 the spirit is based on the deep relationship between the one that is worshiping and the one that is being worshipped. 
worship. It is motivated by love. It is fueled by love. And the love that is given by God through his son. Because the word of God says, God so loved the world that he gave his begotten son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but receive everlasting life. That is the love. That is the love that changes our hearts. If you remember the story or the things that is said about um, a Pharisee by the name of Simon. The Simon, um, the Pharisee invites Jesus to his home and gives a banquet for him and his disciples. If you imagine now uh, he's uh, there, but the way Bible uh, describes it, and the, the, the custom of that those days, when you invite somebody to your home, you kiss him. That's why we see the Bible said, uh, kiss each other with holy kisses. You kiss. That means you welcome this person. And then because of the road, they mostly travel, they have dirt and, and, and dust on their feet. You bring water, they wash their feet, their, their hands. And then we put, I have experienced that. And this, this um, rose water that uh, they put it on your head, and it's very perfume that is so, and you put on the head of this person that he feels good about himself, if he's comfortable in this gathering. But none of this happened. And if you can imagine, I don't know, now Jesus is invited to this house in this gathering. I don't know what was the center of attention, what was being discussed, where Jesus was sitting, who was he talking to? But all of a sudden we see a woman step her foot in, she is familiar with God of, uh, uh, love of God. She is familiar and she knows who Jesus and who Jesus is and was going to do. And, and she steps in as we see described in the Gospel of uh, Luke chapter 7. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew Jesus sat at the table of the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. Oh, I love this one. Uh, Oil and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and she began to wash his feet with her tears and and wiped them with the hair of her head, and she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragment of oil. Can you imagine how many, of the, obviously all the disciples, the, the uh, religion uh, leaders, they were all men. And all of a sudden, a woman comes and said the woman didn't have a good status in that city. He, she comes in, can you imagine? And, and, and all of a sudden, she goes directly to Jesus and bring the best belonging that she has, this perfume and everything this man that was supposed to do when he, he invited Jesus and he did none of those and this woman is going to do do exactly what this Simon the Pharisee did and not only he he takes the hair and wipe the feet of her master God gives us heart gives me heart I may not have long hair But I kiss his feet. You know, worshiping in the spirit and truth has no limitation. Has no limitation. You are not bound by who is watching. You are not bound by what you were. What people were thinking about you. Oh, what these people are thinking. How much worse they could think about this woman. This woman was sinner. But when you put Jesus in the center and you worship him like he is lifted up and glorified, guess what happened? The whole heaven comes in your defense. 
When you worship Jesus and he's become center, uh, the, the worship in spirit and truth captures the heart of God and put everybody's, arrest everybody in the, in the whole room because then they put all the attention is put on Jesus. When you do that, what do you think? You put Jesus on the center and you are not separated between him. He also connected to you in the center and he becomes your protector. He becomes your covering. He becomes your shield. Your shield. See what happened? What some of those d- disciples gnashing teeth and they were angry what the, this woman, what Jesus did, rebuke him, leave her alone. And that's what happened when we worship this almighty God who has appeared to us as in flesh and his name is Jesus, Lord of Lords. When we put him in the center, when we lift him up, when we give him glory, the whole heaven is coming and I stand against hell because we worship the Lord and King of King. That's who he is. When if if you want to if you want to protect your blessings, worship the king in the spirit and the truth. You remember the ten leopards? What happened? Let's read in uh, I think in Gospel of Luke seventeen. It says, and one of them, when he saw he was healed. I was leopard. Leprosy doesn't have to be just a physical problem. The worst leprosy is right here. And Jesus came to set us free. One of them, sure. I have seen some pictures. And actually, I have seen physical thing. I, I have seen people with uh, the, the finger falls. I have seen that. I have witnessed it. Part of body falls. Nose is gone. So this guy sees, oh, I was cleansed. See what happened. When he returns, returns to Jesus, and with a loud voice glorifying God. What was he doing? What did Jesus say about Holy Spirit? He said, that, what does he do to me? Glorify. So if you do something that glorify God, what are you doing? You are cooperating with Holy Spirit. He was with the loud voice glorifying God and fell down on his face. Now he has face. Before he didn't have face. <laughs> on his face. At the feet of Jesus. Giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Don't you find this interesting? So Jesus answered and said, Were not ten plants, but where are the nine? Were there not not any found who returns to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. When you worship in the spirit and the truth, you create the hedge of protection around yourself. You provide hedge of protection around the blessing. You pro- provide protection that the healing. Now the thief cannot come. The thief cannot come and steal and, and kill and destroy. Because you are the true worshiper. And you worship God in the truth. You worship God in the spirit. You are collaborating. You are cooperating with the Holy Spirit. Your heart that is changed. Your heart that is full of gratitude. Your heart that is touched by the Holy Spirit spirit and you know Jesus as your savior as your Lord and there is a deep connection between your heart and the heart of God and you give glory you create hedge of protection and no thief can come nothing can be stolen nothing can be killed nothing can be destroyed (laughs) hallelujah (laughs) you know when you um Worship in uh, spirit and the truth. You bring, you invite heaven. And uh, to me, even that's not invitation. You bring down heaven. You bring the heaven. 
in the situation you are, and the heaven comes fight for you against hell in the situation that you are in. It's not invitation. That's what it is. That's the law. When you worship in the spirit and the truth, God is there. You know, we say, if God is with us, who can be against us? And then we see there is not many problems. The only time is God with us when we put him on the center of our life. He is the center of our uh, the attention. He's getting glorified. Once God, Jesus said, when I'm lifted up, I draw up people to myself. So when you worship in spirit and truth, God is in the center. You are not separated from him. There is a hedge, a whole heaven around you. Who can cut you? Hmm? You remember uh, King Saul was tormented time to time? How was he delivered? By who? Who? David, get his harp. Do you think it was David's music? Do you think that was David's um, instrument? No, it was the anointing of Holy Spirit on David. It was David's heart. The Bible said heart after God's own heart. What was David doing? Worshiping in the spirit and truth. And that's what it caused. The heaven lost their grip on King Saul. And the evil spirit departed. What happened to him? David away. David was not worshiping. Same thing happened to him. If King Saul was a smart, so whoa. Let me see why David, what David has, I don't. Because as soon as David is gone, David is not doing this. To him, he was playing nice music. It wasn't not nice music. It was Holy Spirit using David's heart. Because it was a spirit and it was worship. Worshiping a spirit and the truth that caused heaven come and fight against hell. Whoever, whatever that was. It is, I find it very interesting that I go, we go back to the uh, previous chapter, the f- another encounter that Jesus had with another human being. In chapter 3, we read about um, Nicodemus that comes to see Jesus. There is, there is a, a one common thing between a uh, visit Nicodemus had, uh, more than one, but I, I, I like to talk about this one first, uh, and the Samaritan woman had. They both came at a strange time, at a very unusual time. Nicodemus came at night because he didn't want anybody to see. Samaritan woman came down because he didn't want to deal with anybody at the noon time. And it's funny, it's interesting, that both conversation was about Holy Spirit. Discussion with Nicodemus, Nicodemus said, hey, uh, sir, we know that uh, all this thing that you do, it must be God because it is impossible that a person in human uh, capability do all this thing. And Jesus right, give him the answer. He said, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot, seek the, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What is he talking about? Basic things for entering the eternity. But then... This man says, how can it be? How can a man being born and he is old, can he enter second times into mother's, his mother's womb and be born again? And Jesus said, oh, what? This guy, this guy doesn't get it. Get very, doesn't waste any time. And he flatly tell him, hey, listen. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and a spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then we see that, okay, his reaction, Nicodemus' reaction. He said, Nicodemus, Nicodemus says, how can this thing be? I don't know. I don't want to misjudge. But what I read from the Bible, I don't see that Nicodemus see Jesus and then recognize who he is, and he runs to synagogue and tell everybody, say, hey, I met Christ, come and, and see. And I don't see him run to the city hall and get hold of all these judges and lawyers at the Jewish law, and then, hey, I, I, found, I found Messiah, come and see, and he told me everything. But I know, one thing we know, what happened, 
And that's what Jesus told him. You are the teacher of Israel, and you don't know this. Let's make a comparison. On one hand, we have a big teacher of law, familiar with prophecies, fully familiar with the plan of God for salvation, and familiar with types and shadows that they all point to Christ. And right in front of his face, he sees all these miracles performed by Jesus. And he admits that it must be God. And then he goes and visits him. And he tells him that, hey, I know all this thing that you do. This is from God. And then Jesus talks about simple things. Still, he doesn't get it. On the other hand, we have someone that may have married five times. And he is getting prepared to do the sixth one. But one thing she knows, worship. How do we know? How can I say this with confidence? Didn't she, soon as she uh, realized that this man has something different, must be prophet, the subject that she brought up was about worship. When you see someone, when you uh, have someone that is knowledge or someone that you, can, you think can answer your, your question, which, which, which question you ask? The one is most important to you. Didn't she tell, hey, um, our father said um, uh, worship on this mountain. You Jews said uh, worship in, the, in, uh, in, in here. And Jesus replied to her. Jesus didn't tell her, no, you guys uh, don't know what you're talking about. You are sinners. You have been into uh, marriage and uh, intermingled with, uh, with foreigners. You have to repent. You have to come to your senses. But what Jesus tell, him, tell her, he says, you worship. Agree with her. You worship, but what you do not know. All she had to have, adjustment, the way she was wor- worshiping. And Jesus does it for her. Jesus continues, said the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father is seeking such worship, such, such to worship him. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. It doesn't matter who you are or who I am, no, no offense. It doesn't matter who the person is. Who, it doesn't matter who the person was. What it matters, what she or he becomes after visiting Jesus. What happened to Nicodemus? I'm not bad money, and I'm just, I want to make a point here. And what happened to Samaritan? To me, she was a worshiper. And all she had to do, worshiping in the spirit and truth. And what, soon as she got hold of that truth, soon as she find who Jesus is, soon as with the plan of God of salvation and the love of God through Jesus Christ, see what happened? Drop the water pot and run to the city. I am praying that God give me that desire. I'm praying God that God give us desire. Let's read um, one of the verses that I want to read here. Um, I believe that is uh, verse four in Gospel of John, chapter four, four, four. It says that he, meaning Jesus, needed to go through Samaria. In King James Version, it says he must needs to go to Samaria. So if we do Bible interpretation and use literal translation, what does it say? It says that Jesus had a need. That morning, Jesus had the need. And his need was going to meet where? In Samaria. Do you know that need still exists today? Jesus needs to go to Malaysia. 
Jesus need to go to Philippines. Jesus need to go to Iran. Jesus need to go to South America. Jesus need to go to Central America. Jesus need to go to North America. Jesus need to go to Russia. Jesus need to go to Ukraine. Jesus need to go to Uzbekistan. Jesus need to go to Tajikistan. Jesus need to go to Pakistan. Jesus need to go to Afghanistan. Jesus need to go to Europe. Jesus need to go here and there, including Jesus need to go to Seattle. So what was that need? Very simply, we can, the uh, Gospel of uh, Luke, chapter 19, verse 10, give us a clue. What is that need? It says, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what which was lost. The Son of Man had to come to find the lost. The Son of Man had to come to heal the sick. The Son of Man had to come to deliver, to deliver, to deliver the captives. That's why the Son of Jesus need is to meet the need of the people that God loves passionately, that he gave his life. And that's for reason. He says, we love the will of God. It's, it's, I'm, I'm to do the uh, do the will of God. And what is the will of God? Didn't when Jesus uh, healed that uh, woman in synagogue and, uh, and uh, uh, Pharisees say, you should not do this on uh, Sabbath day. They say, you hypocrites. This daughter of Abraham shouldn't be set free from this trouble. That means that's, that's the heart of Father for us to be free from the bondage from the sickness, from diseases. I believe that it was Jesus' need to go to meet those ten leopards. Exactly at the spot that they were gathered, exactly at the time that they were there. Jesus had to be there to set them cleansed. It is my belief that Jesus had to be exactly on the, on the spot for that widow who lost her only son and the whole crowd were mourning and it was a big funeral uh, uh, ceremony and they were going to put this, the last, the only hope of this widow in the, in, in, in the um, berry and, and, and that call it, call it good. And then Jesus had to be, to meet them exactly at the same spot to disturb this funeral. And Jesus need what to stop everything and Jesus need was to put this coffin on the ground and Jesus need was to raise this boy and Jesus need was to give it to the mother and that's what Jesus came for to give us life and life everlasting to set us free to... can you imagine what happened to that uh, gathering When somebody destroyed party, what do they call them? I don't know if it's the proper word to say it in the church or not. Ruined the party, right? Party crasher. Jesus is funeral crasher. <laughs> huh? Can you imagine what happened to those people? What did they do? The Bible tells us, say you have turned... For me, my morning into dancing. I am, uh, I am, uh, probably my grandchildren are learning from me. I dance. <laughs> and in the church, uh, my youngest son is a good drummer. And sometimes he would get on drum and, and I... <sighs> but anyway. you have seen my dancing, Pastor Gail, and downstairs. Yeah. Were you there? Who saw you saw my dancing? <laughs> I danced like David danced. Yeah. I am a worshiper. Yeah. Amen. So one of these days, I I I I I, I dance for you guys. <laughs> but but you have to pay me. I believe Jesus, when he was told that by uh, Jairus to come and raise my daughter, I believe Jesus 
by Holy Spirit. Need was to go to the route he chose. And I believe Jesus purposely took the time to make it possible for that weak woman, 12 years of suffering, said every day her condition was getting worse and worse. 12 times, 365. So if you just nudge from her, what would happen? Could be pretty bad, but Jesus. Because Jesus' need was to meet that woman's need. And what happened? She became a true worshiper. Who touched me? And then she comes. Like that person that was healed from leprosy. Like on the face. Oh, it was me. God is looking for opportunity to satisfy the need of Jesus who came forth to have his will done as it is in heaven on earth. How that is. He's looking for the heart to get changed and transformed and to be instrumented in the hand of Holy Spirit. Not only the person get benefit, but the whole city is going to be captured by the heart that is changed. Jesus has the same need today. What is your need? What is my need? Do you know? Yes, Jesus is here. Jesus is in our heart. But you know he loves when we gather together? That's why. To me, probably you have your own definition. But when he says, do not forsake the gathering of the saint, because there is a blessing. That's why Psalm 133 says, God has commanded the blessing to flow. Where? Where there is gathering. Where there is unity. Jesus' need was here, is here to meet your need, whatever that is. Do you remember when Peter and John were going to the um, temple and they saw that crippled man? What did they tell him? They tell him, silver and gold, we don't have. But whatever we have, we give to you. So I don't want to make a doctrine out of this. But yeah, probably at that moment, that beggar was sitting there at least six hours. At least he collected some coins. Probably that in his position, he had more money than John, the, John and Peter had at that moment. He said, hey, silver and gold, we don't have. Probably you have more at this moment. But what we have we will give to you. What did they have? What did John and Peter have that 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 lame man didn't have? Jesus. They have tested the true love from God. They knew Jesus. They have Jesus. And also they knew Holy Spirit and his power. Didn't Jesus say, you know Holy Spirit? The world doesn't know, but you know. You know, do we know the uh, Holy Spirit here? We know. So I don't have to tell you, if you are in need at this moment, I want to just encourage you, but I don't have to tell you, oh, silver and gold I have. No, silver and gold I have. The earth and its fullness is belong to God. God did not create all this for enemy. Who is he created all this? So silver and gold I have, and also I have something else. I have Jesus. I have Holy Spirit. But let me give you the news. You know Jesus. You know Holy Spirit. And the same power that raised that lame man is, is in us right here. So if you, are, if you are stuck, just get up. If you have a problem, just, get, just proclaim. If you are having trouble, just you have a sickness, you know that we have God. That he died for that. And his need is to meet your need. His need to make you heal. His need to make you whole. His need to set you free. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Didn't Bible tells us 
what is it in, uh, in Psalm 103? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and everything that is in me. Bless his holy name and forget. Because he forgives. How many? How many? Forgive all your iniquities. And, and, heals what? All. all. Oh, man, four people are going to get it. Hallelujah. Yes. The word of God is for who? So when the trouble comes, knock the door. And as a package for what you do. When you receive mail and it's not yours, what do you do? What do you write on it? Come on! Yeah! Send it to the sender. It's not mine. The address, yeah, but it's not me. This is me. He says that he forgives all your sin. Satan is liar. Satan cannot have hold on us. And he, God himself, in his own body that we have, we have partaken, partook the communion today, he has healed us all, all from all diseases. Okay, I want to make it last point here. Let's go to chapter 4 again. Jesus, Samaritan woman, visiting, and disciples. How many disciples? Twelve. What were they doing? They went to the city. To do what? Buy food. food, right? So they went bought food, and uh, if the restaurants were open and there was no corona limitations and they didn't need <laughs> my license, they would sit down probably and eat. And if there was corona at that time, they said, okay, well, you can have only takeout. But knowing the custom, probably they just, no matter what, corona or no corona, because I'm sure they were not affected by it. They were with Jesus, the great physician. Isn't it so pleasing to our hearts that we know the great physician? And the Bible says... These signs will follow those who? What are the signs? In my name, in my name, cast demons. Speak. What is your worried? The king of kings is on your side. What is your worried? He gave his life. The body was broken for my wholeness. And he says, even... You are taken or by force, whatever that is. Either the corona or if you worry about vaccine. No matter what. No matter what. Let's not worry about. No harm by no means. Didn't he say to Nicodemus, uh, as son of, as the Moses uh, took that uh, uh, serpent, son of God, I 
if the people had deadly poison in their body in Moses' time, and if they look on account of Jesus that had not paid the price yet, but ahead of time, ahead of time, they were healed. How much more? How much more? How much more we are healed? How much more we are protected? How much more? As much as you believe. So we see these 12 disciples go, and uh, I think they, 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 no matter what, they took out uh, food. So 12 disciples went. How many, if you think of sandwiches, how many sandwiches they took? Twelve sandwich for twelve disciples, one for the master. How much? How many that that is? Okay, twelve disciples. There is another disciple, Samaritan woman. They went to the city, right? They brought food, thirteen sandwiches. These disciples, brand new, the first day at work, just got her training. Just got the, 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 the message, and now she launches to go to the city. Perhaps she went to the same city. What did she bring? The end of the story says that the whole man doesn't say to Jesus, uh, I guess I missed that part. After this woman goes, goes to the city and preach to who? To who? What the Bible says? All who? All men. Okay, we can uh, talk about interpretation, but I want to do literal interpretation. Man is man, right? So why man? Uh oh, okay. Uh, uh, I love you, Pastor Gail. I give you two reasons. In those days, at that time of the day, only men were outside working in the field. In her mind, she didn't have the whole day. Do you know time is short, my sister and brother? In her mind, time was short. And she wanted to catch the most she could. What Jesus told Peter, cast in deep. She didn't have time. She knew Jesus is going to be at the well only for a lunch break. Once he f- finished his sandwich, he's probably... So she didn't have too much time. She used the energy and the time, she put her ministry in the most effective and efficient way. And she was thinking, if I catch all these men that are working in the field, accessible to me, I don't have to go door knock to door to door. Yeah, yeah. And if I capture the heart of these men, this men go home, this men, this men go home, and they grab their household, and they bring to Jesus. Do you see that? I pray that we have men among us, that instead of having problems, they run away from their trouble, and they abandon their family. When they have problems, they go gather the household, and they take them to Jesus. That is my prayer. So that, was, uh, that woman was, didn't have the whole day. And that's why she did it so effectively. Do you know what? And I'm saying not to criticize. I'm speaking to myself. Time is short. Either our time is short. But by the way, I'm going to live long, 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 long time. But the whole situation we don't have too much time we need to use our time efficiently and cast in the deep 
Winning souls, yes, we're content with winning the soul, but we have to go after the cities and after the nations. Twelve disciples went. They got 13 sandwich. This woman went. She brought. The disciple asked Jesus, uh, come eat. And disciples told the, uh, the, Jesus told the disciples, I have food to eat which you do not know. Disciples said, oh, did someone bring food? Did someone bring food for him? But Jesus had a better food, a better meal in his mind. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and finished his work. What do you think that was? The big happy meal that she was, she, Jesus was expecting this Samaritan this woman is going to bring to him. Instead of one sandwich, she brought a big happy meal and that was the whole city of Sukkar because she got what Jesus wanted, what Jesus came for, and what the will of God was. Amen? Uh, I'm getting to the end. Uh, I'm not changing subject, but I want to make a point. For a long time, uh, I was seeing this uh, banner with number 12 on it, and I didn't know what it said me. So if you say, where, where you came from? I came from that football was not, soccer was the day game of the day. Uh, banner on the house, banner on the cars. And then, seeing all this, then I, I thought maybe there's something I don't want to miss, but I asked, what is, that, what, what is that for? What does that mean? And somebody explained to me. Said the team, how many players they have? 11, so the 12 then means you, you say, I am part of you. I am, a, I am a one of the players. I am number 12. I said, logical, logically, oh, that makes sense. We have a team that is made of 11 players that they are running in the field. They are playing. And then we have lots of number 12. They are also running but it's outside the field. 11 playing, 12s are paying. <laughs> 12 when God sandwiches, oh, I love disciples. Please don't take me, I'm not, I'm not against the 12 disciples. I love them. But I'm talking about that, that occurrence. 12 went to the city, to the same city, and they got 13 sandwiches. The 13th one went to the city and they brought the whole city with her. For that, I came up with the, uh, with the logo. Can we show that? Uh, and I said, wow, 12 disciples are not with us. Where are they? They are not in the field running, but they are a cloud of witnesses. And the 13th ones, all of us, we are not running. We are not paying. Jesus has paid. Amen. But we are doing the playing, right? Amen? Amen? So it's not just only one. Can I have that picture? And I designed that, and I have an artist to draw it, and I have some shirt. <laughs> Brother Eric, yes. could you get that box? Get one shirt for yourself. Get one for Miss Jenny, one for Pastor there, and put it on that chair, and give it to those that are interested, and they want to be number 13. And go after the cities. And go after the nations. They are, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Get whoever, yeah, get, get whoever wants. Give them to one that are interested. Don't give them to your friends only. Praise the Lord. Pastor Debbie, I did my damage. <laughs> what do I do, Pastor? Love you all. Did I say damage? I'm sorry, I, I did build up. 
I damage the, the kingdom of darkness. <laughs> You've just heard from Evangelist Masood. <laughs> he has a heart for the world. He has a heart for people and is doing the work. And we thank you so much for that. Wow. I've never heard that story like that before. Well, I did in the 9 o'clock service, but I mean this. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Hey, folks, uh, we have a, a prayer ministry team that's going to come. And I know Pastor Masood would be happy to pray for people. Uh, you want some of that passion, uh, get Masood and Sarah to pray for you. They've got that passion for souls. And uh, thank you so much for coming. Let's just close in prayer. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this challenge that has gone out to us. And uh, I just pray that there be many 13s raised up in this day. And Jesus and reaching out and touching lives for Jesus. And we just thank you for that, that ministry of the gospel that you have given us. And thank you for this challenge today to be those that you, that you have called us to be. And uh, I just pray, Lord, that as, uh, whatever the needs are here, uh, we can just uh, reach out and touch you and receive from you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ministry team, come. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And uh, go forth rejoicing in the goodness of the Lord.